So in this segment, we're going to be talking about the UK should not fear uh, a trade war, according to Lord Frost. This this man, I'm, I'm going to go through the top UK trading partners in a minute or two. But uh, yeah, this is this is not smart from the Iceman. The former Brexit. Uh, people question why I, I still talk about him. Why is it relevant? Um, he has a lot of sway. Um, he's one of Johnson's still a kind of advisor, you know, and he's probably one of the more kind of famous Brexiteers now. Probably him and Mog. So the former Brexit minister Frost said the UK should not fear a trade war with the EU. We should absolutely fear a trade war with the EU. He said the UK cannot be uh, defeated by Brussels and needed to make sure it's ready for the consequences of a unilateral move to scrap parts of the protocol. We cannot be defeated by Brussels. Like what? Like this this isn't an all out, you know, war. This isn't a physical war. This is a trade war. The Foreign Secretary Trust expected to announce plans for legislation. Um, we're still waiting on that. It was meant to be published today, around five minutes ago. This is recorded on 12.35, the 17th of May. You know, uh, Trust admits, uh, you know, it's a risky move. Um, disapplying parts of the protocol could result in sanctions or suspension of the trade deal. Um, so the kind of different ways it could go is um, sanction or suspension of the trade deal would mean all our exports are tariffed. Now, in theory, all of the EU's exports to the UK should be tariffed as well, but I don't think that's going to happen because that'll be up to the British government to do that. And if we get sanctioned, then they could cut exports to the UK, or at least certain exports to the UK. And yes, it would damage the EU's economy, but it would do a lot more damage to the UK overall because food prices would go up and there'd be a huge scarcity of food. And there already is that now. Frost said, we may of course face EU retaliation, even though it would be disproportionate to the trade involved, but it's not. this is not just to do with trade, this is to do with an international agreement, that's what these people don't get. Um, only arguably legal and self-defeating, it's hilarious, it's like, oh their arguments are only legal, what about the morality man? Like, what? Well, he doesn't make sense. He goes, I'm not convinced every EU's mem every EU member's heart would be in it either. I, I don't think so. But I, I think they would have to back it purely because you can't allow a, a third country, uh, any country, to break international law like this. Especially given the consequences it could have on Ireland, an EU member. But if it does happen, it will complicate things, but we should not fear it. I mean, we, sh we should fear it. Do you know what? I'm going to do this now. Um... These are our top fifteen, our top fifteen trading partners, right? Obviously, the EU being number one in totality, and then um, the United States would be number two. But if we look at the top fifteen, right, we've got the United States. Um, they would potentially sanction us or put tariffs on us in the event of um, us breaking the Northern Ireland Protocol. That depends on President Joe Biden. Um, but yeah, you know, you've got the United States for one, Germany, EU member state, Netherlands, EU member state, France. Uh, EU member state China, not an EU member state of course, Ireland, EU member state, Spain, EU member state, Belgium, EU member state, Italy, EU member state, Switzerland has a lot of agreements with the EU, um, so I don't know if Switzerland would back the trade war, but potentially they could do, um, because I think the TCA, um, I don't know if we have an individual agreement with uh, Switzerland, Japan, obviously not an EU member state, but with close links to the EU. Uh, Norway, not an EU member state, but within the um, after the um, European free trade area, so they could also back a trade war. Hong Kong, not an EU member state. Sweden and Poland, obviously EU member states. So if we go down the list, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, eight nine, nine of the top ten are EU, nine of the top fifteen are EU member states. If you throw in Norway, that would be ten. So we potentially starting a trade war with ten out of the top 15 trading partners that we have um not smart and you could count 11 if you count the us in there as well depending on what they do next so we should absolutely fear trade war for these reasons and we do export a lot to these countries as well you know so that's why we should fear trade war frost said we may of course face you i mentioned that reese mog the eu wants to make sure that e uh, the uk feel bad about having left the european union that's not true at all if they would have done they would never have done the um, trade and cooperation agreement you know something as severe as a trade war if the uk were to remove parts of the protocol saying it would be a pretty silly thing to do no scrapping the protocol would be a pretty silly thing to do making unilateral changes the ones that we are proposing would be silly things to do um, especially when the proposals are around green and red lanes, even though we could have had those things already if we didn't mess around with them. I've covered that a lot on the channel. The EU would need to uh, need unanimity, and it seems to me that's a pretty high bar to get. That's true, that is a high bar to get, but it's possible. 
especially when they have to they have to square up to Russia. They have to show strength in front of Russia as well, um, because otherwise the Russians will see the EU as weak. Um, do they really want to make prices even higher for their consumers and their voters? Again, that's true. You know, a trade war with the UK, you know, putting tariffs on UK goods will push up uh, the price on certain goods. However, that will only be on obviously British sp uh, specific goods. I don't know how much of an impact it would have on the EU generally, but the EU do have access to um, a lot of other countries. You know, there are a lot of countries in the EU that are uh, manufacturing powerhouses, that are agricultural powerhouses. So there are options. You know, we've covered that a lot before, how EU supplies are found, you know, different supplies within the EU rather than looking at third countries, such as the UK. Croatia have replaced our shellfish. Denmark have replaced the pork export, the pork export stuff like that. I think that's an interesting and important question. The unanimity part is important. Um, pushing food prices up is important, but also adhering to international law is also important. And I don't think this will affect, affect EU inflation that much. The EU may decide it wants to an act of self-harm. What, what's more self-harm? Um, inflation going up slightly, something where the EU can try and cover it with more direct aid, or at least member states can, with more direct aid to people, or allowing an international agreement that you signed up to to be completely destroyed. Um, in the face of a third country which one would be worse that is not under our control but it would be a pretty silly thing to do trust argued she would have no option to act if the eu did not concede to the uk's demands to scrap the checks on goods crossing from great britain to northern ireland again that's not true because most of the time you always have a choice and in this case the uk has a choice um you know if we don't do anything if we don't um if we keep the protocol as is D the DUP won't sit in Stormont. Stormont's been closed um, since February and was closed for years on end over uh, disputes with Irish language, etc. And if Stormont does get closed, then it will go to direct rule and the British government could actually help people in Northern Ireland if they so wanted to. It's a high stakes move that is testing relations with EU leaders or as a wise man once said, it's a bold strategy cut and let's see how this plays off for him. But it's also time to exploit the lack of appetite in the EU for a trade war, which is important here, that given everything that's going on right now, um, it's, you know, the pr prices are quite high in the EU. Let's not forget that. You know, do the EU want to start, no, not sorry, you know, do the EU want to go full retaliation against a former ally at a time when the political focus on Russia and the expansion of NATO, especially when Finland and Sweden are looking at joining NATO with Turkey potentially standing in the way, obviously Turkey not an EU member state, but, you know, the EU has a lot to focus on. They've got Poland and Hungary to deal with it as well. Um, you know, trying to go full trade war with the UK right now could be difficult, especially when Hungary and Poland could, you know, cause problems when it comes to trying to scrap the trade deal, depending on how that process works. Can the Commission do it? Can the EU Parliament do it? Or is it just up to individual EU member states to do that, to, you know, collectively vote on it? Earlier this week, Frost told the US president, who has a vested interest in um, supporting peace in Northern Ireland, to kick out of UK business. This is hilarious. Uh, he goes, I guess we're going to cover this fully anyways. I get frustrated when we are told by a third country, albeit a very important one in this context, you know, a guarantor of the Good Friday Agreement, let's not forget here, how to manage these issues. He told a think tank in the US, he went to America, or at least it was over Zoom or something, and went and said, stay out of our business. It was, it's our country that faced terrorism, faced the troubles. It's not just us, though. It was Ireland as well, wasn't it? I'm old enough to remember having to check under my car every morning as a diplomat before I went to work. Um, most people were very affected in one way or another by this, but surely you do not want to go back to a world where that happens then, especially given your new high-profile um, status now. Surely that's a world you want to avoid, so why are you causing trouble here? His remarks come as a delegation of influential Congress representatives come to the UK, um, headed by Richard Neal, who is very influential in the Ways and Means Committee, and he has say over the UK getting a trade agreement or not. So, you know, Frost talking absolute drivel as always. I think it's worth covering this stuff because the simple fact is people think we can uh, compete in a trade war. Like, we, there's no way we can put tariffs on EU goods. It's not going to happen. So all this is going to do is mainly kill our exports and uh, our exports to Northern Ireland as well, even more, because they're going to have to, they're going to face tariffs and then um, businesses in Northern Ireland will have to try and claim those tariffs back, uh, which is a very difficult and lengthy process. This will destroy trade uh, with Northern Ireland, potentially, if these things do get put in place it's, that's not a guarantee yet but um anyways lord clown show um i'm gonna end it there let me know what you think in the comments below like comment share subscribe support the channel on patreon if you can and hopefully i'll see you in the next one